Hello wonderful person, this is Anton, and today we're going to be talking about Triton, a moon of Neptune that seems to be a little bit rebellious and orbits against the flow of every other moon in the system. You're going to discover a few things about this moon and we're going to talk about its future and its past. Welcome to What The Math. So this is actually the largest natural satellite of Neptune that's been around here for a few billion years and it was officially uh, discovered back in 1846 by an astronomer, William Lassell. Now, it's actually the only large moon in our solar system that orbits, as you'll see in a second, in the opposite direction of everything else. So, in Neptune system, everything, including the Neptune itself, moves this way. Triton, on the other hand, moves the other way. And there's a pretty good explanation about it, and it's actually a relatively simple explanation. The explanation is that it's very likely that Triton is actually not from here. It probably arrived here from the Kuiper's belt, and was very likely um, an object that we would technically refer to as... as... A dwarf planet. So if you actually compare Triton to Pluto, which I'll do in a second, by placing Pluto right next to Triton, you'll notice that not only are they actually pretty much the same in terms of size, their composition and their density is actually very similar as well. So the density of Pluto is 1.87, here it's 2.06. Uh, their actual structure is very similar as well. And uh, for the most part, Pluto and Triton are actually kind of twins. Well, not twins, but they're very, very similar. Uh, they have a lot of ice, water ice, up to about 30% of their entire structure is actually water ice. They have a relatively large core, and uh, they also have quite a lot of nitrogen on the surface, and their coloration, even though it doesn't look like that in this game, is actually similar too. Triton also has these brown spots that are actually formed by something known as tholines, which are um, essentially different methane molecules that were converted into these brown molecules by the effects of the sun. So, basically, Triton is an outsider. It, be it came into the system from the Kuiper's belt and was captured by Neptune, but the interesting story about it is that we don't really exactly know how it was captured. It either collided with another moon, or, more likely, used to be actually a part of a binary system. It's very likely that Triton had an object that it orbited around, and when it arrived into Neptune system, the other object that kicked out, and because of the interaction with that object, Triton lost a lot of velocity, and it's about to crash into Neptune, and basically, it sort of kind of got captured by Neptune. Um, now, let's, let's actually go back here for a second. So, um, the other evidence that Triton is not from here is the fact that um, when it arrived into the system, it very likely kicked out all of the other satellites. As you can see, Neptune doesn't have very many satellites. If you remember, Jupiter has like 69. Even Uranus has a lot more. Uh, and specifically, if we take a look at it, here is actually what Uranus has. Oh, way, way more than Neptune. So Neptune doesn't have that many, probably because Triton sort of kicked most of them out when it arrived into the system with its relatively um, high gravitational interaction. Now, overall, Triton is actually a very large moon. When, it, when the moon comes, when it, in terms of size at least, um, it's, it's pretty much out there with the big ones. It's not as big as Titan, and it's not as big as our own moon, but it's almost as big as the moons of Jupiter, and it's definitely bigger than other moons in our solar system, making it something like uh, six, I believe, largest moon, or no, sorry, seventh largest moon in the solar system. So it, it is pretty large and it's pretty massive as well. Its radius is about 1300 kilometers, which is actually very large, and its mass is two times 10 to the power of 22 kilograms, which uh, by itself is quite impressive, because if I actually compare it to our own moon, which is a large moon too, uh, if we place our own moon here, you'll notice that uh, its mass is only about three times less than our own moon, and its size is only maybe a little bit smaller by about 400 kilometers in radius. But our own moon is actually more dense, 
so that's why it's more massive as well. There is one unusual feature about Triton though that other moons don't seem to have. It's very reflective. It's albedo, which I don't know if it actually shows here. Yeah, it does. Its albedo is almost 90%. Basically, it reflects 90% of the light that it gets, which obviously makes it very cold on the surface, but also it's just unusual for an object like this, but it is very common for uh, things like dwarf planets, which also once again suggests that this was not actually a moon, but probably a captured dwarf planet. And because it moves against the flow, uh, there's several things that may have happened when it was just captured. First of all, it, um, it probably received a lot of tidal heating. It very likely was ridiculously hot here. So the temperatures uh, might have been, well, not on the outside, but on the inside might have been enough for it to start smoking, actually. And we're going to see if we can actually emulate this by making it a little bit hot temporarily. And basically, it probably ev uh, evaporated a lot of stuff because it was so hot on the inside and that reflected on the outside by creating all, all sorts of volcanoes. Uh, now, cryovolcanism here is very common, basically does have volcanoes, and it's actually one of the few objects in our solar system that has very, very um, new, very refreshed sort of surface that's only about maximum 50 million years old. In other words, all of the surface here gets uh, renewed through all kinds of tecto tectonic activity and cryovolcanism. So because of this relatively young surface, we know that there's not enough impact craters here, and um, in compar comparison to other moons, it be barely has 200 craters, which is very unusually low for a moon of its age. So this suggests that uh, this is one of the few objects similar to things like Io, things like Enceladus, that do have cryovolcanism and active replenishment of the surface. And one thing about the Triton is that, like many other moons, it's tidally locked, and this obviously took it a while to get. So tidally locked means that it's always pointing with the same surface toward Neptune. Um, but because it's tidally locked and because it's moving against the flow, it's actually slowly approaching Neptune. It's moving closer and closer to Neptune. And within the next 3.5 billion years, it's actually going to reach the area known as the Roche limit. You can learn about this in one of the previous videos, which also means that What's going to happen to beautiful Triton is that it's going to either collide with Neptune, but more likely, it's actually going to do this. I'm going to em emulate this by moving it closer and closer and closer. So this is like almost 4 billion years in the future. And there we go. It's going to fall apart. It's going to actually create a very large ring around Neptune, very similar to the ring around Saturn. And probably even bigger than that. It's very likely it's going to be the most biggest ring in our solar system. And this is 3.5 billion years after today. Now, it's not going to be very big in this case because our Neptune or our Triton is falling apart a little bit too fast. But it is going to be a very, very massive ring that will probably look something like this. So there is sort of the face of new Neptune 4 billion years in the future. It's going to have a very large ring system basically made up of leftover uh, Triton stuff. Now, there's a few other things we've actually discovered about Triton, and uh, that's despite the fact that we've only visited the system once. Only Voyager 2 got to actually take pictures of Triton, and since then we haven't really been back to Neptune's system, and we've only observed it with telescopes like Hubble. But that's just not enough for us to learn about it. So we know that uh, this system also has... Not system, but this moon actually has a little bit of atmosphere. Not a lot, but just a little bit. And the atmosphere is composed of nitrogen, very similar to the atmosphere of Pluto. And um, it's about 170,000th the pressure of um, Earth atmosphere. So basically here, it's not really, you wouldn't even call it atmosphere, but it is there, so we have to call it atmosphere. And um, it's made up of nitrogen that usually is present on the surface, but it sublimates and it's created by various volcanoes. So it's released into uh, the outer surface here and then creates a kind of a thin layer around the moon. And once in a while, it actually does increase in, in pressure because sometimes um, Triton points with its poles directly toward the sun. And when that happens, it gets seasons. And during those seasons, volcanoes are more active and produce even more nitrogen. 
And it actually gets to point with both poles toward the sun. So there's actually quite a lot of extreme seasonal changes here. And they occur uh, depending on where Triton is in its orbit around Neptune. So the seasonal changes on this moon are actually quite dramatic. And one of the last things I wanted to talk about is that there's actually quite a lot of unusual surface features on Triton. And a lot of them we still can't really explain. Like, for example, there is actually something called cantaloupe terrain, which kind of looks like basically a melon surface. And it's mostly dirty water ice that seems to only exist on Triton. And we don't really know how it was formed, but we think it's probably because of some sort of a density uh, variation underneath it. But we haven't seen it anywhere else in our solar system. So Triton does have quite a lot of mysteries for us to discover. But the most important thing about Triton is that, well, it is actually a very good uh, way for us to study not only how um, various dwarf planets interact with various uh, gas giants, but also to study those dwarf planets and try to understand their composition. Because Triton was probably born on, in Kuiper's Belt, far, far away from the sun, and it probably has water that was later uh, brought to our old planet Earth. So the water on Triton is very similar to water on Earth. And this kind of might give us an idea where water came from and how it actually formed on our planet, because we still don't really know what and how brought water to Earth. Anyway, so this is Triton. Let's finish this video by making a beautiful explosion out of it. But first, let's explode Neptune and see what happens when its explosion arrives to Triton. Thank you so much for watching. I'll see you guys tomorrow. Come back tomorrow to learn something else. Share this video with someone who enjoys watching space videos. And space out. And as always, bye-bye. And the shockwave hit Triton, and now it's all fiery molten ball of beauty. There you go. This is what happens when Neptune explodes.